So I'll be reading uh, following the theme of today of um, stories that appear in multiple cultures. Uh, the first story um, follows um, um, the tradition of, you know, people fearing the devil. Um, it's called Wicked John and the Devil. It's from uh, Appalachian his history, though it appears in other uh, cultural traditions. There once was a man so mean that everyone called him Wicked John. He had a blacksmith's shop up in the hills, and he didn't like to be bothered by nobody. He swore at the kids that came snooping around his shop, he kicked at stray cats, and shouted at the ladies that tried to get him to church meetings. One thing about him, though, he always did treat a stranger right. I think he did it just to rattle the townsfolk, for when a stranger came through town, people would shut up their shutters and doors and whisper and point with suspicion. Well, Wicked John had just called that tattered traveler right into his shop and serve him his best vittles. And that's just what happened one day. An old man, all shriveled up like a raisin, came hobbling along the road, hunkered over and using two canes. The townsfolk were passing him by on the other side of the road and casting backwards glances at him. Wicked John just gave a scowl and invited the old man into the shop. He put down his work and went to get him some supper. Wicked John brought back a big plate loaded with ham meat, a mess of greens, cornbread, boiled sweet potato, and said, Now here you go, old man. Just see if there's something you can chew on. And Wicked John went back to his work. The next time John looked up, the old man had finished his meal and was about to stand up. He was looking a mite stronger. Away went one cane and then the other, and he started to straighten up, taller and taller and taller. And there he stood with a long white robe and a long white beard, and he just sort of glowed. And he had a bunch of keys hanging on a chain around his waist. He says, John, I reckon you know who I am. Well, Wicked John hadn't stepped a foot inside the church all his born days. So he didn't have a clue. I am St. Peter, John. I guard the pearly gate to heaven. Once a year, I come down and roam around to see if I can find any decent folks left on earth. The first one I came across that treats me with kindness, I give him three wishes. Now I know what a mean man you've been your whole life, but you've been good to me. So I'm going to give you the three wishes. Wicked John just stood there, thinking. Go on, John, said St. Peter. Anything you got a, got a mind to, you can wish for, and it'll hit you that way. John started looking around the room, trying to get an idea of what to wish for. There was a gleam in his eye, for he was thinking mean. John said, I know. You see, there's this big hammer here. Those blame boys are always coming in here and messing with it. They like to take it out back and bust up rocks with it, and every time I need it, they have to go looking for it and confound. If I ain't been left to rush in the rain like not, and I just wish that anyone that teaches me my hammer wouldn't be able to let go of it. And it would pound on them something fierce till, the, till I said stop. Well, St. Peter looked pretty sorry and said, Laws, John, that's a terrible wish, but I've got to give it to you. Now, what's your next wish? John was still looking around his shop when his eyes lay on his high backed rocking chair. He got a devilish grin on his face and said, See that rocking chair over there on my porch? That's my chair. And there's nothing like better after a hard day's work than to sit there, rocking into the evening, but blast it all if most nights someone else is already sitting in it and it just makes me sad. I wish that whoever sits in my chair won't be able to get out of it and would get rocked so hard it uh, about knock his brains out till I said stop. 
St. Peter just shook his head and replied, You've just one wish left, John, and it seems to me that you might want to be thinking of your immortal soul. John, he had already decided on what his last wish should be. Come here, St. Peter. John led him out onto the porch. You see that old thorn bush over there? That there is a fire bush. And in the spring, that old thorny bush grows the biggest and purest red blossoms you ever did see. But confound it if folks don't come along and break off a switch whenever they got a mind to. And folks driving their buggy to my shop back over it and trample all over it until it's a wonder it's still alive. I just wish that anybody who teaches my bush, that they just catch them. And hold them down in the middle of the bush where the thorns are the longest. And it just stick them till I say stop. <laughs> well, St. Peter looked mighty sad. Stepped over the threshold and was gone. Wicked John grew older and older he got. The meaner he got. Until finally folks said that he was wickeder than the devil himself. When old Scratch heard this. He decided it was time to take Wicked John from this world because he didn't want anyone getting a bigger or better reputation than himself. So the devil called one of his sons to him. Little devil, you go on up there, get that old man, Wicked John. Tell him it's, his time, it's time for him to come down here to live. Wicked John was working on a wagon tire when he looked up and there in the doorway stood a baby devil and said, Wicked John, you very, very bad man. My daddy says it's time for you to come and live with us now. Well, Wicked John didn't want to go, but he said, Well, I don't mind going with you, little devil, but I just can't go until my work's finished. You see this wagon wheel? I just wouldn't feel right unless I got this job done. Why don't you grab that hammer over there? And give me a hand with it. Well, all kinds of kids like to play with tools. So the little, little devil went right over that hammer and picked it up. La bam, la bam, la bam. That hammer was sitting him all over, and he couldn't let go of it either. Wicked John, tell this hammer to stop. I want my mommy. If I tell that hammer to stop, are you going to go out that door and down the road and come back anymore? Oh, I am, I am. We tell this hammer to stop. All right, then. Stop, hammer. And that hammer let loose the little devil and whippity cut. That devil tore out of there and never came back. Well, old Scratch didn't like that. So he called one of his bigger sons to him about teenager size. Little devil, you go up there and tell that old man Wicked John to get on down here and no more foolishness. Wicked John was working on a horseshoe when he looked up and saw a medium-sized devil in his doorway. Daddy says to come get you, old man, and no foolishness. All right, said Wicked John. Just a few more licks. Reckon you can let me finish his horseshoe. Come on in. I'll be a minute or two. Don't think about asking me to help you, old man. You'll find I'm not as easy to trick as my baby brother. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. You can just take a load off while you wait if you want. There's a chair over there. And he pointed to the rocking chair. The minute that John sat down, the chair grabbed hold of him and wouldn't let him go. It began rocking back and forth, back and forth, and the devil tried to get out. The harder that the old chair rocked him and, until... But the chair continued to rock him until his head was just going whippity-whap, whippity-whap, whippity-whap on the back of that old rocker. And finally, he got to begging and hollering for Wicked John to let him loose. Wicked John said, If I tell that chair to stop, are you going to go out that door and down the road and not come back to these parts no more? Oh, I am, I am. Just tell the chair to stop. All right, then. Stop.
chair. And that devil tore out there whippity wap and was never seen again. Well, old Scratch didn't like that and decided that he would have to go up and get Wicked John himself. Next thing John knew, there was the old boy himself standing in the doorway, himself, with his horns, his long tail, and his pitchfork, and he said, Wicked John, now I've come to get you. I don't appreciate how you've treated my boys, and it's gonna go poorly for you, get up. You are coming with me. No more foolishness. The old devil reached in and grabbed Wicked John by the collar and started dragging him up. Now Wicked John might have been told that all those years of rotten mean behavior had made him tough and scrappy, and two old boys went at it, fighting, punching, scratching, beating, and biting, till the devil was foaming at the mouth mad. Confound ye, old man, I'm going to lick the hide off you right now. Just see if I don't. Now where? I'll get a switch. The old devil looked around and reached for that fire bush. And the instant he touched it, whoosh, it sucked him right up into the middle of it where the horns were the thickest. He thrashed around, but the more he did, the more he was stuck fast. Finally, he just stood right up with his legs sticking out of the top of the bush and said in a very small voice, Mister, what do you want? Please, sir, let me out of here. I'll let you go on one condition, that you nor none of your boys will ever bother me again, you hear? You promised me that, and I might let you go. I promise. You'll never see any of me or my boys again. So Wicked John let him loose, and such a kicking up dust you never see end. Whippity cut! The old boy left then and there, and he wasn't mosing or nothing. Well, Wicked John just kept on getting older and meaner. And eventually, even though no one was coming for him, there was nothing for him to do but up and die. He went up to the pearly gates and knocked. St. Peter opened the crack, the gates a crack, and said, Why, Wicked John, what are you doing up here? Well, I've passed a hunt and I need a place to go. St. Peter just shook his head and pulled out his old book recording. You see this book, John? This is where we make an accountant of all the deeds a person does in his life. This here page is yours. On this side is where we record all the good deeds you've done, and if, if you look closely, there are a few entries written. And on the other side, this is where we write down all the mean and wicked deeds you've done. As you can see, it's plumb full down. Why, we've had to squeeze in more. Diagonally, crosswise, in the borders. No. John, there hadn't a chance in the world of you getting in this place. And St. Peter shut the gates. So old John turned around and went down the staircase. Down, down, down. And when he came inside of the gates of the other place, one of the little devils had to peek out. Daddy, Daddy. Look, look yonder. Old Scratch came running, and when he saw who was coming, he said, Bar the gates, boys. Bar the gates. They slammed him shut and turned the key. When Wicked John got to the gates, the devil said, You're not welcome in here, Wicked John. You just turn around there now and put off from here. Yeah, said the little devil. You're a bad man. And John replied, well, I thought that was the point of being here. Old man, you made us a promise to have nothing more to do with you, and that's the way it stands, the devil said. Wicked John felt a little lost. Confound, what in tarnations am I to do? St. Peter won't let me in yonder, and you've locked me out here. What am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? 
So the devil, he looked around for the longest set of tongs and reached way back into his fury fire furnace and pulled out a white hot glowing ember. Here you go, old man. You just take this chunk of fire and go off somewheres and you start a hell of all your own. Now sometimes in the night, if you're out in the swamp, you might see a ball of light moving along the horizon. Some folks call it a will-o'-the-wisp. Others say it's swamp lightning or swamp gas. But it ain't that at all. It's just Wicked John doing his lonely wandering, looking for a place to call his own. <laughs>